this is probably like of the most unnecessary of unnecessary nudity. Um, respectfully, respectfully, yeah. I still appreciate it. And apparently, it was her idea. She told the director she wanted to do it because she thought it added something to the scene, and he allowed it. Was yeah, yep. She was she was respectfully. <laughs> she was correct. Respectfully, respectfully, um, she was correct. Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of I Finally Watched. This is David. And this is Alon, and I finally watched Training Day. So, this was a huge movie when I was growing up, yeah. obviously. But yeah. like a huge movie for me and for my friends. Um, I was thinking back, so there's that scene in the car where Denzel makes him smoke. And like as we were coming to that, one of my friends, like a couple of my friends always used to be like, if you don't hit this, we have a problem. And I thought that was from this movie. And then I realized that, no, that was from the Wayne Brady Chappelle show sketch spoofing this movie. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but like that scene, this entire movie, like, I don't know, it was just kind of in the in the culture for so long. And um, it's one of those ones that I think if you don't watch for a while, you kind of forget how good it is. Because yeah. I remember thinking back to it, like that was pretty, you know, it was pretty good. Like a good Denzel, the story was, you know, it was so so. Watching it this time, I had like a much greater appreciation for it. Either I re remembered how great it was, or I, for the first time, like picked up on some stuff that as a, you know, as a teenager, it wasn't, didn't work as well for me. Um, this movie slaps. And as the kids say, Denzel was fucking amazing in this. Like, I think this is, you know, like Denzel winning the Academy Award for playing like a gangster kind of bad guy. Um, you know, maybe doesn't age well, but he's so fucking phenomenal in that part. He he won an Academy Award for this. Yeah, this was his first. Well, he, he won. Um, I think he won supporting for Glory, and then he okay. won the actor role for this, which is funny. Because Ethan Hawke ran as best supporting, even though he's the main character in the movie more than Denzel. And then Denzel <laughs> ran as best actor and won. That's funny. Um, the a couple of things about that, I guess, is that one, I was I remember I was not allowed to watch this movie when I was younger. Um, and it's funny because and I've told this so many times on the pod there was barely any movies that I wasn't allowed to watch, right. but, but this movie was like stuck out for me as like one that was just not like, <laughs> not on my rotation. Right. And then I re also remember like being a teenager, maybe even a little younger and having friends who've seen this movie. And, um, I'm like, I feel like such a loser, not, you know, having seen this movie, I can understand, though, why that like a 12 or 13 year old is not allowed to see this movie. Um, it, the drugs and the attempted rape and the words that are being said on the screen, the violence. Um, but this movie, I guess, grew in my head so much as a as a film that was like larger than life like um i i guess it's like for me this movie was like braveheart in my mind like at a grandiose scale and now the title completely makes sense training day this movie takes place over one day i was surprised how contained and small scale that this movie was um like obviously it has Ethan Hawke and Denzel. Um, but I can't imagine the budget being that much for this movie. Yeah. I mean, it is filmed in LA, but it was 2001. So, but yeah, like it's interesting how sort of big the movie feels, but being contained. So it's estimated to have a budget of 45 million. That's a pretty good vamping until I found that number. Um, 
And then, <laughs> Actually, you almost made a flawless um, transition if you didn't point it out. Well, you know, I like to be opaque. Yeah. Opaque? Real? Yeah, I like to keep it real. Yeah. Um, everyone knew what I was doing. I, uh, I think the other thing I want to talk about, too, before we get started is... So, there is not one redeeming quality seen anything for denzel in this movie there's yeah. nothing yeah but he is so magnetic in this role not that i'm rooting for him but i'm just loving watching him like watching him work watching him yeah. talk and and i do think our like view of police as <laughs> as white people has maybe changed since 2001 but like like or in just what the way, way the way they're portrayed in the news and whatever and the, just like copaganda in general like the way that you show a, a cop in a movie it's like i don't know this would have been in 2001 when you're watching it you're like oh man he's kind of a bad cop but it's like but maybe i don't know maybe he's getting the job done maybe that's what you know the way you're supposed to look at it but really when you look at it now you're like no he's just a bad cop it doesn't matter like it doesn't matter the good he does like he's going around murdering people he's planning evidence like He's yeah. just like horrible. He's having his partner smoke <laughs> drugs in the car. It's it's insane too. Like this movie is easier to watch again than it is the first time watching. I was having heart attack after heart attack through this movie. Um, I like had to put on pause. I had to like hit the skip forward 10 second button. I was like, what the fuck is happening here? Because I, what they do so well in this movie is that they established Denzel's character. Um, to be so erratic that you don't know what he's going to do next. You and, and it keeps you as the audience, Ethan Hawke too, probably keeps you on your toes. Um, being like, well, fuck dude. Is he just going to shoot him, kill him right here and now, like in the middle of the street, like you've seen him do worse. You've seen him do, you know, maybe not that worse, not that bad, but um, he's not scared of nothing. And so making him a character that doesn't think the rules apply to him, not scared of anything, it, it puts you in this frenzy of like, you know, you, you just don't know what he's going to do. Earlier this week, uh, Twitter had this like a page on Twitter had this thing going around where it was like, maybe it was two weeks ago. What actor do you think can play a good guy and a villain? equally as well um and i saw denzel's name get circulated through that tweet quite a few times and if people are referencing this movie yeah i can see it yeah absolutely um the other thing too is ethan hawk so i had not at the time this came out not seen much from him and so him being nominated for this i'm like I mean, what? It's just because Denzel's being nominated, so they're nominating the other guy in here. Like, but when you then go through a lifetime of seeing Ethan Hawke and other things, and then you come back and watch this, you realize how great his performance is too, right? It oh, yeah. seems it seems kind of nothing, but it's like purposefully, like the way he plays it is so purposeful. It's hard though. It's hard because Ethan Hawke. Uh, like his character compared to Denzel, any character in this movie compared to Denzel is so um, not as big, right? Like, like except for toned, uh, toned down. Ray Raymond Cruz is sniper. The guy from uh, Breaking Bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I think we have a theme going on. We have um, we have Giancarlo Esposito in January. We have him this month. We're going to have Brian Cranston next month. So, uh, Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we 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 have like a Breaking Bad ensemble going on all the way to at the end of the year. We should either do um, Need for Speed or um, Last House on the Left. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe in October, Last House. Um, I think we can get into it. I like this movie. Kind of starts out pretty kind of perfect where. He's getting ready for the day. His wife is like yelling at him. It's like, don't forget your uniform. Don't don't mess this up. You got to get there on time. You know, let me cook you a breakfast or whatever. And then gets a call and it's like, you know, you're not going to roll call. Wear fucking normal clothes like and, you know, meet me at this place. I mean, like just sort of immediately spinning on his head, like what he thinks his job is about to be. Yeah. And, the, and the movie also sort of 
to put you in the place of Ethan Hawke, you're finding out stuff like as he does, right? Like the movie doesn't give you a bunch of exposition of the wife saying like, now, babe, today is your first day as a detective in narcotics. And this is a trial period. And that it, like you find that out as sort of very naturally. That's just called good writing, man. And you know who wrote this? Is the same guy who wrote um, The Siege, right? Well, it's David Ayer. Oh, from Suicide Squad. Give us the air cut. That's all I'm saying. Give us the air cut. <laughs> no, we're past that. We're over it. Um, Do you really trust the WB more than him? I don't. They didn't give us our media pass. I don't trust the WB for shit. Um, well, that was probably a good decision. <laughs> yeah, and I love the introduction to the wife, too, because um, it's this like, and we get it all, right? We get it all in one shot. He gets up out of bed. He talks to the person who's supposed to be on the his, his uh, opposite side of the bed. She's not there. The camera turns around and we see her with their newborn baby. So in like one shot, we get all of this. Um, I I love the part. And you you get that this dude is a dick. And I'm talking about Denzel at the diner scene right off the bat. You get this like. Order breakfast. Nah, man, it's too late to order breakfast, right? Like it, it's it's this erratic nature that's that's hopping on, and it's it's just a dick. You know what though? Like I think the way he says everything too is so. It's either perfectly written or perfectly ad libbed, right? Where he's like, "All right, well, I'll get something." He's like, "No, you won't. You fucked that up. Now shut up and sit there." And you're like, "I'm not. You don't have time to do that anymore." Uh, and then like, he's like, tell me a story, you know, entertain me since you won't let me read my paper. And the way he just talks about is like his female officer he worked with. And then he's like, you were with this fine bitch for all these months. And the best story you have is a DUI stop. Uh, David, you got to watch the misogyny. Okay. Yeah, exactly. A <laughs> liquor license. A liquor um, license. The thing is, though, is that the way that Denzel disparages women in this movie and it's total misogynistic um but ethan hawk has has a wife a newborn baby a wife that he loves it really starts showing the polar opposites of these of these characters I come to denzel find lo- denzel loves parts of ava mendez I love parts of Ava Mendez. Ah, can I say that? Um, but the the thing is, though, yeah, right. So come to find out that he's with Ava Mendez and he has a kid with her, right? And he has Which, three others, apparently. Apparently. I find but out at the very end. It's this awesome parallel where they're they they're both. I don't think he's married to Ava Mendez, but they both have significant others. They both have children, but the way they treat their private lives are completely different, completely opposite. Yeah. Uh, the last line from the Steiner scene, he's like, Ethan Hawke says, I got a wife. He's like, you got a dick, right? And to the right and left of that are pockets. Pay the bills. <laughs> you know, just like, I don't know. I just, all the, all the dialogue. Reach into those pockets yeah. and pay the damn bill. Yeah. And then we get to in his car. He's like, when are we going to the office? And he's like, you're in the office. And I love the car in this. It's a Monte Carlo. Um, and then he says the line, today's training day. Uh, as he looks into the camera, points his gun. <laughs> um, I There's a line, and I feel like if I don't say it now, right now, I'm going to forget it, is where their, um, the back window is shot out three times. Mm-hmm. And they come out of the restaurant where... Um, Denzel just finished talking to the three wise men and he tells him to get the valet to get the Monte Carlo. And as Ethan Hawke is describing which car it is to the valet, he goes, you know, the one with the shot out back window. Yeah. The bull holes in the back. Yeah. So he like there, there's a bunch of dialogue in between like, just sort of like it's natural dialogue to like it's what they would talk about because they're two people who are meeting they're both cops so they have that in common what are your goals you know why are you wanting to join this group and at first he's like oh to protect and serve he's like all right what's the real fucking answer he's like i want to be a detective he's like all right well you know if you stick with me um you know we can make that happen and so then sort of the next scene is he 
Denzel has an informer that works for him. He allows him to sell drugs. And then Denzel just scopes this guy out and pulls over his customers. <laughs> Which is, now that I think about it, a really great beginning scene to show that he will screw over his informants later on. You know, it, it is, but like... What's his name, Bruce? <sighs> uh roger the guy roger. the guy kills yeah yeah i mean it is but like he also in this instance right like it doesn't screw over his informer because he just he's like the guy already made the sale so he's just getting the college kids afterwards and it's like i don't even know what the point of this scene necessarily is except just like it's a cool scene i Maybe think it's to, a show ethan hawk right like hey this is what we kind of do yeah 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 i guess just the way he like you know also control the woman in the back who takes her hands off the windows right and then they sort of just scare the shit out of them and i think he even oh yeah what he threatens the one college kid like i'm gonna let them run a train on your girlfriend back there because it also shows that like he's not the most professional right it's a slow i think we get that before dude (laughs) ah sort of but it's like a slow decline into how bad he is right and it's like ethan hawk is experiencing this the same way we are where it's like you meet denzel he's really funny in this diner scene he's a little crass and then you see him the way he operates in this first instance. You're like, all right, well, that's not that's not perfect. And it just keeps getting worse and worse. But dude, I've met dudes like this, like like the crassness and the uncomfortableness of Denzel in the opening dining scene. Like I've I've met dudes like this, and my first inclination is I just never want to talk to you again. I just want to get as far away from you, and I never want to become your friend, and I want to leave this party. And what's funny is that the whole time that this decline of character is coming from him, I want to leave the situation, but I can't like there's a there's a comfort level where all right, I'm on the outside of this. I'm just a viewer spectating this like, you know, 20 year old movie. But then on the other side, I was just like, dude, I would be so far and gone if I was Ethan Hawke in this situation. Yeah, but then for us as the viewer, it's like, it's Denzel. So we're like, just along for the ride. <laughs> so right after this, this is kind of like one of the most famous scenes in this movie. And it's really interesting how Ethan Hawke is high for like the next 20, 25 minutes of this movie. Like he's coming off of it. I was actually mad at the mad at the, the movie for a second because I, he was experiencing what it was like to be high on weed. And I'm like, this this is not what it's like to be high right? on weed. <laughs> I'm like, this is so stupid. This is like, this reminds me of like Reefer Madness or like a P, um, PSA where it's like, this is your brain on weed. But when he's like, nah, man, it was cut with PCP. I was like, oh, I've never done PCP. So that's probably exactly what it's like. I don't know. I love to the way he pulls. He's like a good narcotics officer should have narcotics in him. Stops in the middle of the intersection, pulls the gun on him and like, get out. You're fucking done. And like. You can see the inner struggle in his character of like, but I want to be a detective. Am I going to fuck it up over this? Like, this guy's telling me to do it. I should listen to him. It's just weed, right? That's what he's thinking. And he's like, and we hear later, he's like, he's done weed in his life before, right? Yeah, when he was like in high school. Yeah. So it's like, but it is, it's like the slow decline that he's bringing Ethan Hawke in slowly. It's like very perfect the way he's sort of a, a predator, even with this guy. Oh, a hundred percent. I also love the guy honking on the at them and he pulls a gun on him and the dude is like, Yeah, okay, fuck, dude, whatever. <laughs> like And then afterwards when he tells him he's like, You're an adult, ain't like I put a gun to your head. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, What you you did? Oh yeah, the fucking mind games he's playing with him too the entire time. Especially when we find out that like he used the PCP thing later on to be like, dude. I'll report you. They'll check your blood. They'll check your urine. They'll see that you have drugs in your system. Like you, you're, you're fucked. You're more screwed than I am. Yeah. This movie is written in a way. If I have one, like drawback to it, I think in a way it's written like slightly too cute. Um, in that, like, so a movie that came out a few years after this was, um, crash and that movie besides the like fixing racism in under two hours it also just had these interconnecting stories that like 
kind of solve themselves pretty like neatly. Yeah. That's one thing about this movie of the way like, oh, he stops the attempted rape. And then in the end, that happens to save his life. Yeah. Um, You know, Denzel knew to drug him because he was going to use it against them if he needed to. Like, I mean, it works in the movie, but I, I do think it's a thing like in movies now where people are just like, all right, man, you know, like the coincidences and the way like this story, you know, almost like a deus ex machina type thing. I mean, the it's not a deus ex machina because it doesn't just pop up at the end, but like the way it's so like purposefully set up and then just the coincidence and how it happens. Like I, it doesn't bother me too much, but it is like a, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. I, I get it. I, the, the drug thing, you could, you could just be like, oh, coincidentally, he had him smoke the PCP. And so now he has that over his head, right? Th- that could be written out, written off as like nothing, whatever. The whole. The whole thing for the the wallet and the girl. Yeah, I, I can see that. But also the whole movie would fall apart if it wasn't for that. You know what I mean? No, you have to have some reason that he gets to live. And so it's 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 fine. Um, but I'm just saying like. Yeah, there's always you can always point out like little squ- uh, squabbles you have with like a story. But um, so next they go meet Scott Glenn, who plays Roger. And when they pull up, it like sort of reminded me of the Fast and Furious house. Like where the family <laughs> yeah, lives. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Um, And then we kind of get this little thing where uh, he's like, yeah, there's a green light on you from Vegas. The Russians want your head. And I like. I was like, man, I don't remember this Russian storyline at all. That mo- that part of the movie completely had left my brain because I haven't seen this movie in like two decades. Wow, okay. Yeah, so, which is then why when the ending happened, I didn't expect it. Um, I guess once he starts driving away, you sort of expect it. Um, and then for some reason, Roger just know like is really into high school football and remembers Ethan Hawke playing high school football for North Hollywood High. I love how that went down. He's like, what's your last name? Hoyt. He goes, Hoyt. Fullback? Blah, blah, blah. And he goes, yeah, how'd you know that? And then Denzel turns like, how the fuck did you know that? First of all, he's a strong safety. There's no way someone with that build was a fullback. I don't know, Uh, dude. Whatever. I'm I'm surprised a fullback is actually a position in football. (laughs) Nice job. Uh, Then he tells that snail story. (laughs) What the fuck's your problem? And he laughs. He's like, oh, wait, that wasn't funny. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it could yeah. have had a funny punchline you know what's funny about that story though is that that is kind of how the movie ends Denzel, Denzel's fucked Ethan Hawke up right but then when he comes back he's not there to help him out and and it's the fucking it's the fucking um, gangsters in the street that screw him up anyway so it's like yeah you know, just because they're black a lot doesn't mean they're gangsters, all right? I think uh, they were, what do we call them, bloods? They, they were bloods, yes. They were okay, cool, yeah. <laughs> so they actually had to, like, sort of get permission from, like... From the bloods? Local street people to, to allow them to film in that area. Um, and then the control your smiles and your cries and like, oh, shit, that's so deep, man. But you're still just so fucking high. The next scene we get is the, the two junkies assaulting the girl. And Denzel just watches as Ethan Hawke's getting his ass kicked. And just like, oh, man, he's doing like cause sort of almost like, oh, this is like an impromptu test where I get to see what, what you're made of. Um, he did pretty good, dude. Well, I I actually don't know. They're strung out junkies. So actually, well, they have. Su- yeah, but they have. Su- if they're if they're currently high, they have like superhuman. Sh- you know, they don't feel pain as well. Oh, yeah, that's true. They're true. They so, had- yeah, I mean, pretty impressive. Yeah. And then um he also only thought there was one of them. So he sort of got surprised attacked from the back. So that's like, true. I forgot about that part. Yeah. So pretty, pretty well done. <laughs> well, how, why, why do you think that guy was hiding? You think, you know, oh, if someone's going to stop this, my friend from raping this girl, I'm going to, I'm going to hide here, jump I don't out. Think he was hiding. I think he was holding her from the, you know, they were behind a trash can or whatever. Oh. Um, and there's just a bunch of like gross lines from these guys. Like he's like, that girl's 14. He's like, still tax that ass though. Um, yep. And, and then, that girl is not 14. 
Jesus. You want to be really specific on no that. No way that girl is 14. And also, like, okay, maybe maybe in the position she's in, I'm like, okay, whatever. But then later on when we see her again, there's still no way she's 14. But no, I looked it up. She was 20 because you said this off mic. You're like, there's no sh- way she's yeah, 14. I was like, no you don't have to be so weird about it. You know what I mean? It wasn't being weird about it. It was just I was surprised that they picked a 20-year-old girl to play 14. Yeah, because she doesn't look anything like 14. Yeah, you're no, right. I mean, but also, that's pro- I mean, that probably just makes filming easier, right? Because if you have an actual 14-year-old <laughs> getting assaulted, yeah. and like, you know, I mean, the rules on like child actors are pretty like yeah. strict. Get, so. get Jodie Foster in there. Yeah, she, I mean, I don't think she was 14 at this time. <laughs> no, 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 no. But you, you understand my reference though, right? So Denzel comes in. He's like, you want to go to the booty house? And he's like, suck my dick, bitch. And Denzel just the under the breath line. That's how it starts. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. Yeah. And then he's like, now you told me to suck, suck your dick, bitch. Is that what you said to me? <laughs> um, I, I also love like that other hobo guy being like, um, next time I see you to Ethan Hawke, he's like, next time I see you, I'm going to fucking kill you. And it only prompts Ethan Hawke to walk back to him, which only leads to him finding the wallet, Letty's wallet, and picking it up. Also, she's named Letty. We just saw the Fast and the Furious house, and now we have that. Yeah, I don't, yeah. So, and then they have this sort of argument in the car where he's like, you know, you're letting bad guys go. And he's like, I've given out 15,000 man years of time. Um, and then he's like, you know, but you did good, man. And uh, I saw you use that chokehold, <laughs> you know, you know, that chokehold, that's a no, no move. And he's like, I was getting my ass kicked. What did you want me to do? And then probably my most quoted line is Snoop Dogg's smells like bacon up in this motherfucker. Let's <laughs> say that all the time. <laughs> um, Snoop Dogg uh, and Terry Crews took me out of this film. Really? And that's not even fair because that's uh, that's before Terry Crews was anything. Well, he was T Money before that in the uh, kind of the the Bobo Gladiator show that he was on, which um, I think he was also was he in, was White Chicks a thing at that point? Uh I don't remember my timeline. I think White Chicks happened after this, so I don't remember. Oh, you know what? He was a nothing role in, but then they like extended his role was in The Expendables. Yeah, he's pretty big by the Expendables. I don't know. We're having a like. Let's do a Terry Crews month if you want to have a timeline of his career. You know what I mean? <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Just I was just because he didn't say anything. He's just sitting sitting there in the background. He's not exactly a guy that's just like you know goes unnoticed sitting there in the background. By the way, if any of you know Terry Crews from his T Money days, please reach out to us because like when I bring this up, no one knows what I'm talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Very important to me and my family. We used to watch it after Walker, Texas Ranger every Saturday <laughs> night. So we'd stay up late and have to wake up early the next day. Um, he chases down Snoop Dogg and then he fucking like makes him open his mouth and sticks a pen down there to make him throw up the, the drugs. Uh, and this leads to uh, what's that guy's name? Sandman and they, the, they follow the Sandman lead, which. So then they follow the Sandman lead. They go to this house. And I know you didn't recognize this lady, but like the mom of Sandman, I'm like, is that fucking Macy Gray? And it was Macy Gray. Who had why like, does, why does the name Macy Gray sound more familiar than that woman's face? Uh, well, she normally has like she had one huge song that if I could start singing it, I'm not going to you would recognize. But she also had like the like an afro was kind of her look, which she didn't have in this movie. It's not Missy Elliott, right? No. Okay. Woo, boy. Woo-hoo, no, those boy. are those are different people. Macy Gray's a singer. Missy Elliott uh, raps. So there's a. I slight... think some people. I think some people call that singing. Do they? <laughs> I don't. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know I don't anymore. Know. Yeah. I don't know um, what you're doing. Yeah. So this all leads to Denzel stealing her money. Right, because he needs the money for something we'll find out in the future, and then um, she calls him out on stealing the money, which irates the local gangbangers around, and um, they start shooting at the Monte Carlo. Well, because they basically think like she thinks that oh, these aren't even cops, right? They just stole from me, and Denzel's sort of okay with her thinking they're not actually cops because like 
he is a cop doing something illegal. So it's like, you know, but she's also not going to call the real cops because that was drug money. You know, it wasn't like that. She didn't cash it, her, you know, her check from work and then stick it in her drawer. Yeah. So, you know, uh, yeah, this shootout's pretty great because, you know, you're getting more and more of this Denzel character. As they start getting shot at, he starts smiling because he gets to return fire and he's fucking like lighting these. He's not hitting anyone, but he's like lighting them up. He's for cover fire. He's hitting, dual wheel, wielding up two pistols and awesome. one. And he has one sideways and the other straight up. And I read it's because if he had had the other sideways, the bullet would have fallen straight down because that's where it came out of. So he had to have that one straight and the other one to the side to look, look cool. Fucking badass. Yeah, it looked like I mean he knew what he was doing. Yeah, and yeah. then they get they get out of there, they get the bullet holes, uh, and then they head straight to the jungle, uh, Damu. And this is a really cool, like this is a set piece to set up Ava Mendez and then to set up basically the end. But the setup of this place, he's like he's like, dude, why the fuck are we going in here? You're not supposed to go in here unless you have an army. And then like he's like, you know, I treat them well, so they leave me alone. Like you see the pigeons released and he's like, yeah, that's to warn them that I'm here. Dude, that shot, that shot's awesome. It's like a, you see the pigeons, you pan down, you see their Monte Carlo coming up the uh, street and then you see the guy clapping to like, you know, move the pigeons in a certain order. Like that whole thing is great. You have the, um, what do you call them? Fire. Are they, are they like fire, um, stairs? They're like the, the porch stairs they are all interconnect it's it's nuts it's like the way this is set up is like the jungle it's like all their porches interconnect the rooftops interconnect you have gangsters on the top of the rooftops with shotguns and rifles um even when he comes back at night you got dudes up on the rooftop just keeping watch and what's cool too is there's some foreshadowing where he goes up and he says hey to that one guy bones and Bones is like, thanks for helping out my cousin. And then he walks off. He's like, I fucking hate that mofo. Like, can't stand him. You know, it's foreshadows like how he's going to be treated at the end. But, you know, you were saying that he says he treats these people right or fairly or whatever. But it's like, it's kind of like in a way he's made them their bitch. And that's why his, Bones I mean, and his, others. Yeah, he's made them sort of resent like, him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then we meet Ava Mendez, who, uh, I think this is the first thing I ever saw her in. Oh yeah. She definitely makes an impression on you at a young age, specifically in the, the last scene. I just want to talk about it now. You know, I'm always saying in these movies that like, this is probably like of the most unnecessary of unnecessary nudity. Um, respectfully, respectfully. I still appreciate it. And apparently it was her idea. She told the director she wanted to do it because she thought it added something to the scene and he allowed it. Yeah. Yep. She was, she was respectfully. She was correct. (laughs) Respectfully. Respectfully. Um, She was correct. But I just find it interesting. I find it interesting when it like, I don't know, because it obviously takes away the stigma sometimes if you're like, oh, well, like, was she like, this is her first role. Was she like forced to do this? You know what I mean? Like, uh, when we talked about, uh, I don't know if we talked about that and do the right thing, how Rosie Perez felt uncomfortable about that. But, um, yeah, so we meet her, we meet the son, um, and then he sort of just falls asleep with the son playing video games and he falls asleep, like with his arm around the sun. Like I thought it was like just to set up that the son is going to like let him back into the apartment later yeah. on. He's I like, I'm your, I, I'm your daddy now. I don't think he was going to take a, that sort of role in his life. Um, and then they, they leave after I guess they're like, so he's like, they're taking a nap as he's banging Eva, Eva Mendez, like in the middle of the day. I don't sure. even know if they, did they even feed uh, Jake in the scene? Yeah. Yeah, they do. They oh, they did. Food. They gave him yeah, some yeah. food. Mm-hmm. Okay. She, she, she serves him some food. He goes, Oh, this looks great. Thank you. She goes, you're right. She goes, you can watch whatever you want. Don't worry about it. We have, we have cable, you know, and she's saying it like the, don't let my son, play video games if you don't want to watch him play video games she goes fuck stenzel and then he comes back out and he's like let's get the fuck out of here respectfully and then he, uh he's like yeah let's get the let's get the fuck out of here 
and um then they head to the three wise men yeah, you yep they do so one of the three wise men was tom berenger who i really get confused with sometimes especially when he has the long hair with uh mickey rourke like i know they're different people but like i'll see one and be like wait which one is that i'm so sorry dude all three of those dudes look like the most common white man well one of them was a very important person to me and you on a show that we're pretty big fans of i'm I'm guessing you're talking about the show justified I am also I am very correct. And the guy on the left, closest to Denzel, that was Raylan Givens' father. Oh, oh wow, he got old. I mean he looks pretty fucking old in this too, but yeah, yeah. I guess he's gotten a little older. Yeah. Uh I've never seen him in anything else but Justified. Raymond J. Barry, apparently according to IMDB, is still with us. So good. I didn't want to have to How old is he? He was born in 39, so that makes him 85. Jesus. Uh, 85 in March. Oh, March there, huh? Yeah, there we go. Um, and so then they start talking a little bit about the Vegas situation. Not too many details. <laughs> the fucking the story about the peanut butter in the ass. <laughs> the guy pulling it out is so fucking funny. By the time she found out, he was already signed, sealed, and delivered. Yep, too late. Uh, his, yeah, no, that's a very good one. And then they tell him, like, you just need to get out of town. He's like, well, no, I'm going to tax my first account. And he's like, if I'm gone, no one can protect him anyway. And you don't know exactly what that means and you, because we don't really want to know, right? We're, we're supposed to be in the same situation as Ethan Hawke. So I almost keep saying Ethan Hunt every single fucking time. <laughs> and then we got the go-ahead and, uh, you know, they find out what the – Ethan Hawke finds out why he stole money from Sandman. He stole money from Sandman so he could bribe a judge to get a warrant. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, he's like, I didn't want to know that. Because he says, do you really want to know? And he's like, you know, warrants aren't free. And he's like, shit, I didn't want to know that. Um, do you sometimes get Ethan Hawke and Matt Dillon mixed up? No, um, I don't get them mixed up, but I do. I used to think of Ethan Hawke and the guy from the Quentin Tarantino written movie with Patricia Arquette. Oh, um, Christian Schlater. Yes, there we go. And the name of that movie is True Romance. There we are. I, I knew it was TR too. The fucking tip of my tongue. We just did that movie like three months ago. Uh, Not even. I don't get them confused, but I like, I don't know. I conflate them a lot, which is just the same thing said a different way. Yep. So we meet the crew and a bunch of faces I sort of recognize. I guess you didn't recognize Dr. Dre. I thought he was was locked in Eminem's basement. He was the black guy. If you weren't confused about which one Dr. Dre was. Maybe the worst acting in the movie. Um, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, which, okay, which scene is this? On the rooftop. He's one of the crew. He's one of Denzel's guys, one of his cops. Oh. Oh, yeah, he was bad. <laughs> like, throughout. Yeah, he he's the one that got punched by Ethan Hawke in the face, right? Yeah, yeah. And then he goes, he goes, I'm gonna kill you! Yeah, that was bad. I was like, why is this so bad? Yeah, it was... It's really weird that you like so Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre, I think, are responsible for either the entire soundtrack to this or a lot of it. Like they did songs for the movie. Sure. OK. That doesn't mean you have to give him a major role in the movie. You know what I mean? Like it's not major, major, but it's definitely like. It's not it's not good. Who's the who's the um white guy that gets shot? What's his name? I don't know his name. Um. I, whenever I see him, I'm just like, it's the dude from the mask. It's the dude from the mask, right? Um, so it's every the time villain, the villain from the mask, the thing is about that dude is that when we are introduced to him in this movie, there's a weird push in close up that lingers a little long on him. Like none of the other dudes, not Dr. Dre, not the other one, but him. There's a push in close up like the movie really, really wants us to remember who this is. Um, I don't know why he gets shot and we never see him again. 
It's Peter Green is his name. It's okay. so weird. Like, why is Dre... Dr. Dre is so far up on the fucking cast list. And this is what? In credits order? Why is Dre so... Like, what? who is his agent that cut such a great deal of like, yeah, he'll do the album, but you have to let him in the movie. And he gets to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth lead? So are you looking at IMDb? Yeah. So I don't think I do, I don't know, but I don't think and it's very hard pressed if this is actually how it goes. But um, IMDb's order, the way they put their cast, is the order in like the credits of the movie. Well, so at the top it'll say how they put the cast because sometimes they'll do it alphabetically. Sometimes the movie does it that way too. But this yeah. one actually says cast in credits order verified as complete. So I'm gonna trust it today. Um, either way, that's just... insane. That's insane. I know I was looking up a voice actor and uh, the voice actor, pretty famous voice actor, but I was looking up his credits and like other animated stuff he's done. And he's like second build, fourth build. And I was asking my sister-in-laws who, who knew of the movies. I was like, is, is this character actually that important in the movie? Cause he's like fourth build on IMDb and they're like, this is, this is a character. This is like a background character that has one line. Okay. I'm like, I'm like, ain't no way that IMDb is credit is like putting it in that order then. Yeah. I don't know. So they're, they have a legit warrant. He shows Jake this time and they go into the back of this house so that we don't recognize it. And then when you get in, you then see them coming from the front, too. And you realize, oh, we're at Roger's house. And, you know, there's some pretty great dialogue where it sort of comes as a shock when he eventually shoots him with the shotgun. Um, but he says, you know, the wise men said you have to render unto Caesar, which is like just a kind of a great line. It is a great line. Um, and then they find the money under the floor and he gives him what $250,000. And he's like, you're so fucking lucky rookie that today's your first day. He's like, well, I'm not going to take that. I'm not, I'm not comfortable with it. And he's like, okay, you're not comfortable with it. And he goes to the other guy, what's your comfort level? He's like, I'm pretty fucking comfortable. He's like, okay, all right, great. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just really good shit. How much is, is there's like 6 million in the floorboard and he's giving each of his guys a quarter of a mil. No, so, sorry, sorry. There's four. There's four million. So and he's he like, says, well, today, today there's three because he's taking a million for the for the Russian mom. Yeah, I don't know. The, I didn't. The math is a little wonky because what he has four guys besides him, but then he also needs a million to himself. He needs a million, and then he's going to report a certain amount of it. I mean, I think eventually he'll figure it out to where you know it works out for him not dying. Um, but yeah. And then he pulls the, he gives the shotgun to Jake and he's like, you know, shoot him. And he's like, oh, shoot him. Okay. And he like pretends to shoot him. And he's like, no, no, r really, really shoot him. He's like, I'm not. This is one of my him. most suspenseful scenes. I was, I kept getting up, walking behind the couch. Like I kept fucking pacing. I was like, fucking dude. I thought, I thought Denzel was going to grab the shotgun from his hand and like force him to pull the trigger. I didn't know how it was going to go down. Yeah, and then he's like, well, if you got to do something, you got to do it yourself, and just blasts him. And I think it is fairly shocking when it happens. Yeah. Um, And then he <laughs> shoots Peter Green twice, and one goes through, and for the rest of the scene, he's just like, can we fucking call an ambulance? I'm dying here. And he's just like, hold on, man. We're, we're working some stuff out over here. Didn't that remind you of um the scene in Scream? Yeah, yeah, where it's yeah, like yeah. Matthew Lill Lillard is shot, and he's like, "Hey, it man, hurt. it fucking hurts." Yeah, uh, yeah, no, good, good stuff. Um, and then Jake pulls the shoddy off of him, and this is where he tells him, "Like, you have drugs in your system." He's like, "You've been playing this all day." He's like, "I've been playing this for weeks." Uh, and then he is like, "All right," he puts the gun down, but punches Doctor Dre, which, thank you. Yeah. Dude, every time you say Dr. Trey, I'm like, Dr. Trey, locked in my basement. Yeah, that's exactly how Eminem says it. Uh, and then he sort of tries to talk him off the ledge. He's like, you know, just stay with me for 18 months. 
you know, I'll get you whatever job you want. Um, and we're going to go talk to my guy in the DA who's going to tell you, know, or my guy is going to tell you what to say to the DA or internal affairs or whatever. And um, there's a scene right before this where you can see Denzel's in the car talking and you can barely hear anything except he says something of like, make sure the bathrooms, the bathtub is clean. And so that he goes, is, he goes something about rice. He goes, yeah, maybe you shouldn't eat so much rice. Well, yeah, in that case, make sure your bathtub's clean. But it is him telling him to kill. He's like, hey, I need you to kill this guy. Right after telling him you're one of the good ones, I can see you going farther than even me. You're just like me. I can, you know. You're the, like, only, you're the one who can lead us, not these other guys are idiots, but you're going to take over. Yeah, he's like vamping him up so much. And it's just to fucking kill him, which is crazy once you figure that out yeah yeah because apparently you can actually hear his car drive off like during the middle of this scene coming up so they go to this house and you actually have hector from fast and the furious who i was like does he play hector in this too because there's that meme of like he always plays a guy named hector yeah but his yeah. i think his name is moreno in this one him breaking bad guy and then Cliff Curtis, who is a Pacific Islander, playing <laughs> like a, a, I don't know, Latin Mexican yeah. gangster. What do you want to say? Then? Okay. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to assume what ethnicity he was playing in this movie. We call or what that listen. In, yeah, yeah. In the in 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 the industry, we oh, yeah. call that ethnically ambiguous. <laughs> <laughs> that is what it was. Yeah. Yeah. So you have John Leguizamo playing an Italian plumber. So. <laughs> <laughs> they start playing poker and then getting mad about charlie day taking the role go ahead uh, i think he got mad it was chris pratt i think he was mad about charlie well anyways when is charlie day doesn't play charlie charlie day plays luigi and he played luigi he never played mario oh that's right yeah either way i don't think he was playing him as a voice actor but anyway charlie day i mean i don't know he's from philly right so he's probably italian no, so, he's Irish. That's why they own the Irish bar. I don't fucking care. <laughs> His last name's Day. I get it. <laughs> so um, during this poker game, we kind of get the full story of why uh, Denzel is like, you know, on the run right now. And he was a hothead in Vegas. Some guy mouthed off to him. and He just fucking killed a, like a Russian dude who's has connections. I think we call that an oligarch. No, we don't. Okay. Not all Russians are oligarchs. I was unsure about that. So, okay. You thought all Russians. <laughs> Whatever you say. So, they're playing poker. J- Jake just making stupid decision after stupid decision. Gives up his fucking gun. Uh, I don't I know. I don't know when what world he would have, like, why would he have ever done that? Dumb. Just fucking dumb. Um... And he is about to die. And then they find the wallet and they call the girl up. And at first she lies and you're like, oh, fuck, why are you lying? And then she like admits to everything. And he's just like, man, life's a trip. And he's just like, you know, it's just business guy. So, oh, the- yo, Holmes, you not going to believe this. Don't do that. <laughs> so in the original script, apparently at this point, when he pulls him out of the tub, He tells Ethan Hawke that Denzel originally wanted them to burn him alive in front of his wife and daughter. (laughs) What? Yeah. That was like the original That was cut though, right? That didn't happen in the movie you watched, did it? No. No, I guess guess not unless I missed something. Um, That's insane. Yeah. It was going to get a little darker. A little darker than, than it did. So he takes the bus reminiscent of the equalizer taking the bus to fight the russians so hold hold up for a second because there's a couple of parts in this that i i really enjoyed him flipping the table and fighting back i thought i was like oh shit is he gonna get out of this nope nope um and then i thought the phone call to letty was really good but i thought the best fucking transition in this movie was them letting him go it's a close-up on ethan hawk's face and he's like, listen, this was never personal. 
it's just business. You understand that, right? Right. And Ethan Hawke, probably just to get out of the situation, it's like, yeah, I understand. And um, it cuts to Ethan Hawke with the same scowl on his face, riding the bus. And I'm just thinking, the music is playing, the shots that are being shot here. I'm just like, this guy is going to fucking kick ass. Like, you have good old boy cop Ethan Hawke in the beginning of this movie, and this is where his entire character is like, badass. I'm like, at that point, I think there's just like, you're rooting for him all the way. For Hawk, right? Yeah. Okay, thank God. It's just like, you're a bad person. So he gets to the jungle. There's like people pointing guns at him as he's walking in, like you're in the wrong fucking space, man. He doesn't he, even have his gun holster. He's just w- holding it in his hand. And then he walks up and Bones is like, you got business here, rookie? And he's like, I'm here for Alonzo. And they're like, oh, fuck yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, let's just go for it. Uh, and then he goes in. The sun lets him in. And um, he try, He pulls his gun on Denzel and I love the like the shotgun hit under the bed and yeah. the, like but the before that telling him like dude it's I've told you it's not the truth it's what you can prove you got no witnesses uh and then he shoots at him and I love the line I'm surgical with this shit Jake because he is like he's really good with the guns even before that when he's like you passed the test you got out of there good for you like he's still trying to to I mean obviously he's just trying to buy him time right but he's still trying to like up his ego. He's like, holy shit, dude, you, you did it. Like, I didn't think you would, but you, you, good job. Like you passed my test. Those guys, those guys aren't going to kill you. Like he's, he's still trying to lie through his teeth. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, and so then the sun pops back. Dude, the sun is so cute in this. And you're like so worried for him. He yeah. tells him to hide in the closet. I say so. I was thinking about this earlier. I was like, oh, it's such a cute little kid. And then I'm like, that kid is like 27 years old now. <laughs> um, I was never really worried for that kid. I was just like. Well, yeah, you're not going to show a kid die not, in this movie. I mean, you might. By the way, for as violent as this movie is, two people die. Yeah, that's true. Um, and they're both bad. Um, but I mean, Roger sells dope to kids. It's not like, and we don't even know if that's true. You know what I mean? That's true. I guess we don't know if that's true. So he's, if you didn't think Denzel's character could get any worse, he's basically about to use his son as a human shield to get out of here. I, I was waiting for the moment where that was going to happen. And then. Ava Mendez pops out after Jake grabs the sun and she's like, Oh, he jumped out of the window. And I was like, dude, why doesn't I, I didn't realize at the time that he had ran out of ammo and that's why he starts running away. Cause I was like, Jake pops his head out of the window. I was like, he could just fucking kill you right then. I was thinking that too. It's like, he pops his head out of the window. He decides to follow him by climbing the roof. If I was Denzel, I would sit on the edge of that roof, wait till his fucking head pokes up and then fucking kick him. Yeah. But instead, he just finds him on the rooftops and beats the shit out of him. Throws him through a glass door, which would have really fucked him up. You think Denzel's getting away in his car. And <laughs> Jake, this part is weird. He jumps on his car. Cr- Denzel crashes into a bunch of cars and ends up hurting himself. Not hurting Jake, really, at all. Also, and- the aerodynamic of Ethan Hawke making that jump, even when that car was parked, was damn near impossible much how less far away yeah, i don't know i need the mythbusters to figure out how far away he, that building was and like he what backed speed up like he five to... ten feet when he just got the shit kicked out of him his legs aren't moving that well um he gets him out of the car he takes the money from him and then Denzel's you ever like, wonder sorry but you ever wonder why he didn't finish him up on that roof he just kind of left him up on that roof because he had to make it to the Russians by midnight or he'd get killed. I oh. One of the unanswerable questions of this movie is like, the Russians would kill him anyway, right? Like, why do they have to be honorable in this? You, you killed a made guy. Like, they'll just kill you. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Give him a million, whatever. They gave him, it's like they gave him 
impossible task because they thought he couldn't do it. Just because he does it doesn't mean they're like, all right, I guess we can't kill you. Like, still kill him. Yeah, I mean, it depends how honorable they are. <sighs> no honor amongst thieves. So Bones then puts a gun on the ground. And he's like, you got to do it yourself because Denzel has this line of like, you know, first person to sh- shoot him in the head is going to be a rich man. And then Denzel's like, I know you. You're not going to shoot me. And then you just shot me in the ass. <laughs> Yeah, I was so this was the second scene I was so tense about because I was just like. I I don't want to say that I foresaw Bones turning on Alonzo and being like, all right, yeah. But then when he puts the gun down on the ground, I was just like, fuck, dude, how is this going to play out? And then Jake just leaves. And this part is it's a little odd to me, so we're going to talk it out. So Jake just leaves, presumably because these guys are just going to kill Denzel, right? And Denzel starts giving this right. the speech of the movie, King Kong ain't nothing on me. I'm gonna... ain't, got, ain't got shit on me? Yeah, I just, yes. Yeah. Is it is it that? It is, that's it. It's King, King Kong, Kong ain't got, ain't got shit, got shit on, on me. me. Yeah. I did it better. Anyway, I, no one can tell. And then all the people are so disgusted by him. They're almost like, ah, oh, he's kind of like he like in this scene has like lost his power. They're like, oh, wow, he's just a little bitch. He turns to Ava Men- Mendez and she's like t- walking picking away. Up her son, walking away. So that all happens. And you think like, oh, they're going to kill this guy, but they just let him go. And I guess we're just supposed to assume that everyone in the jungle knows that the Russians are going to kill this guy anyway, that he's a dead man anyway. Like they all know the score. Yeah. I don't know because he's like, I'm going to walk out of here with my money, Jake. I'm going to walk out of here with my money. And he's like, no, you're not. And then, so does Jake take the money or does he leave it in the Monte Carlo for, for Alonzo to drive off with it? That's the part I'm confused about. He took the money. Um, I'll tell you okay. why in a second. He took okay. the money and then, Denzel drives off and is then killed by a the hot, Russians. A hot Russian lady. I don't think she does. She's more of a distraction. But I mean, he should have also seen that shit coming, right? Like, clearly something. He kind of right does. Way. He he double backs. Like he um, what is it? Called? He double looks. Double take. Double take. Double takes. That's a good movie we could do. Uh, who who is it in? Who is in it? Um. Orlando Jones and Eddie Griffith, Griffin, Eddie Griffin, Griffin, Griffith, Griffin, Eddie Griffin. Uh, it's like a uh, Orlando Jones is sort of caught. I don't remember. I don't remember the movie that well because I watched okay. it over That's 20 fine. years ago. But That's it's uh, yeah, it's an interesting comedic tale. We so did, do that the same uh, month. We do bait. Antoine Fuqua was filmed before oh. this one. Oh, um, as I said, I didn't know we were doing bait. Um, so. Yeah, so he double takes on her and he's like kind of suspicious, but then grows real suspicious when that car comes in and cuts him off. Apparently, David Ayer, one of the writer, no, one of the writers, he is the only writer on this movie. He's the only person who wrote this movie uh, is one of the Russians that shoots him. And they're all wearing masks. Who, who cares? They shoot him in the car and they start laughing at him as he crawls out dying. And then they shoot him some more. Yeah, it's crazy. I was also wondering, like, because he had a hidden shotgun in that uh, in that bed under that bed. Right. It's like, does he have a hidden shotgun in his car? Is he what's he going for? Is he trying to go for the money? Um. So how sure are you that Jake took the money? So after this, there's a scene where Jake just goes home and we hear the radio talking about Alonzo. And I guess everything's been swept under the rug that he's a bad cop. Right. Like he's going to get his his wife and kids are going to get the pension or whatever. Cause they're like, Oh, he died in the line of duty. He's a good cop. Um, there's a scene. I don't know if you notice when Jake pulls up, um, when Jake pulls up to his house, his house, there's a car behind him. And you're, if you go back and watch it, you'll see it. There's a car, there's car lights behind him. And you're like, what the fuck is that? If you pay close attention and what it is, is a scene that was cut 
where the three wise men come to talk to him and he's like, I'm putting the money in the evidence locker and that's it. And I'm not doing this shit anymore and I'm out. And they're like, Oh, well, okay. Just as long as you keep your fucking mouth shut. Like that's fine. It's like one of those scenes. And, um, so that's how, you know, that's what he did. But also, I mean, he's carrying the bag. So I think it was pretty obvious. I guess he is carrying the bag. Okay. All right. I believe you this time. And that's how it ends. Dude, I was impressed. I really liked the movie. I thought it had some really, really great moments um, in it. If not, like, every scene was surprisingly great. Uh, I think with a movie like this, you can't help but, like, get away with, like, like you said, some cutesy scenes or some plot hole scenes. But, um... And also having Spike Lee month and now Denzel month filled with where Denzel plays a good guy, um, especially in the Equalizer and the Siege, you have. uh, Yeah, I, I have a very different view of Denzel now, you know. Yeah, so a couple things before we get to like the alternate casting stuff, so. Denzel ad lib the King Kong line, which is just fucking epic. Yeah. Uh, apparently, originally, the movie was also supposed to end with Denzel just getting away with it. And Denzel was like, nah, he needs to have. I was blood. afraid of that. That's one thing I was afraid of. And he's right. King Kong ain't got shit on him because they both died at the end of their movies. True. It's real talk. So, um, here are some alternate castings uh, for Jake Hoyt. Apparently, uh, Ethan Hawke was not like available at first, and he was the first choice. So Tobey Maguire was going to play the part. He was like, uh, you know, doing the research, meeting with cops, meeting with gangsters, stuff like that. And then Ethan Hawke became available, and they're just like, "All right, you're out," which kind of sucks for him. I. I think that would have worked, but I honestly think Ethan Hawke's pretty perfect for this. Yeah. Yeah. So ones that would have worked a lot less are Mark Wahlberg would have been okay. Ryan Phillippe. That's fine. Christian Bale would have been good, but different. And uh, David Ayer was kind of impressed with him. So he eventually put him in harsh times, which is a David Ayer movie. Um, And then the other one that is just fucking crazy to me is that Eminem was considered for the role and didn't do it because of 8 Mile. Okay. That's kind of crazy. You can't feel that bad about Toby because I'm pretty sure the very next year he got Spider-Man. Yeah, no, I mean, he's fine. He's doing... he's doing a- Well, he was doing A-OK. Now I think he just plays poker and chills. Um, the toe for Grace. So... I don't know if they're friends. Samuel Jackson was supposed to be Alonzo with a previous director, but then that director got out and Fuqua came on and Denzel came on. I think Denzel probably came first. Denzel actually chose Fuqua after screening the movie bait, according to this. Um, Also the Alonzo part, uh, Gary Sinise and Tom Sizemore were considered. And then my Mickey Rourke confusion earlier, he almost was Roger, but the studio said no. He can't be Roger. One of the other dirty cops that broke into Roger's house. um, I feel like that could have also easily been played by Tom Sizemore. Tom Sizemore can always play, could always play a dirty cop. You know what I mean? Like that's just, that's just what he had that in him. Yeah. Yep. So the only other thing is, you know, relitigating the Oscars. Um, I don't know. I'm really like, there are other things Denzel could have won for like Malcolm X, I think is obviously like a big one, but he's once again, this performance is so amazing in this movie. Um, It's not anywhere near the same movie. I think with almost anybody else in that role, because like you have a purely evil character that has so much charisma that you're so drawn to throughout the entire thing. And it's weird that like, you're not like, you're like, yeah, he deserves to die. But like, I enjoyed being with him throughout this movie. It's just a very sort of interesting character that I don't think a lot of people pull off. And so I don't know, I'm pretty happy for his win in that. And yeah, this movie was 
fucking awesome to to rewatch and to talk about. I think this and Inside Man are probably two of my favorite Denzel roles. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. And just two great Denzel movies, too. So, yeah. Well, thanks for listening to another episode of I Finally Watched. This is David. And this is Alon. And I finally watched Training Day. <laughs>